six of those names are in that list of 1,200. And suddenly, if you are either looking, so, so DNS experts say, well, people always look inside first. They're idiots if they don't look inside first. Not. It turns out most Microsoft servers are configured the other way. They look outside first, and if they can't find it outside, then they go inside, which is why I get so much traffic at corp.com, and why .corp is the second highest <coughs> occurrences on that 1200 list when we did the study. It's way up. And it's because of that sequence. So now what's happening is that traffic that's intended for the most trusted the known knowns suddenly goes to the least trusted because these are unknown unknowns. These aren't known unknowns. These aren't external resources that you know are untrusted. These are external untrusted resources that you don't know you're going to. So this is the worst case from a security standpoint. And it turns out that it's there's a lot of this kind of traffic. So that's the the description of the problem in a nutshell. This is a list of the top 100. It's a little bit bigger type. And the ones in red are just the ones that I highlighted that I thought were really interesting names from that trusted perspective. And when the studies were done, there's a lot of traffic going to those, to those names. That's the problem. That's a picture of either a light at the end of the tunnel or an oncoming train, and we don't know right now what's going to happen. What's the catch here? Welcome. You just missed all the good stuff. Oh, no. Oh, no. Um, so, this particular issue is moving so fast that, like yesterday, is the latest update. I can't just had a long public comment period. All those, pu as with everything in ICANN, this is all online. It's kind of hard to find. The website's a little creaky, but there's 80 some comments about this issue from all points on the compass. I've got four in there because I did studies on corp.com to see what we could learn from a delegated name. And so I've got tons of statistics there. And in a way, this is analogous to the Y2K problem. We have two poles. we got doom and gloomers that say this is the end of the planet as we know it. We have Pollyannas, primarily in the, the registrant, the, the applicant group, who say this is nothing. We have dozens of expensive statisticians painting pictures with circles to make it look big or little, depending on what your point of view is. It's a standard, use a statistician to tell your lie for you kind of thing. Fabulous work. And we still don't really, what we know now pretty well is the amount of traffic. What we don't know anything about is the nature of the traffic. We don't really know what will break. Maybe nothing. Maybe lots of stuff. And what the moderate crew is sort of lobbying for is, look, we've got to understand what these <coughs> things are going to do first. Which brings me back around to the ISP perspective, which is, although I hang out with MICE, which is a pretty small ISP and doesn't have a lot of these issues, I've been talking to a lot of really big <coughs> ISPs. And when I talk to them and I say, here's the problem, they say, you mean, my customers, the customers of my network may suddenly have these failures when these things go into the root. And who are they going to call? They're not going to call ICANN. They've never heard of ICANN. <coughs> They're not going to call a registry. They don't know who Joe Schmo who runs dot sucks is. <laughs> They're going to call me. And the big ISPs are awake big time. Um, for the most part, I, for the most
most part, ISPs don't participate real actively in ICANN because for the most part, it's, hey, it's not broken, fine. Can't really justify sending the people. They're suddenly kind of interested, more than kind of interested. And one of the stories that I tell in a blog post is the story that of what we did at GoFast. Because in a way, this is the reverse of the situation that was in place when we were doing it. There, back in the mid-90s, there was Postel's route. That was the route. That's the one everybody used. But there were alternate routes. There were people who had dot .web and you know, a bunch of other stuff. And we put up another server that said, if you want to use those too, that's fine. Here's how you get to it. Your mileage may vary. Uh, if it breaks stuff, uh, go back to the regular route. Well, all of a sudden, ICANN's route with 1,200 new TLDs starts to look like an alternate route. And the, and the big ISPs are starting to ask the question, what about Coke Classic? Can we, can we go back to Coke Classic? Can we just have regular, regular route, not that fancy new 1200 route? And that conversation is pretty interesting in terms of shaking the pillars of Ike. That's my grenade, and that's the end of the story. Now I'm going to go sit at the table.